morning creative stampers this is Kelly welcome to my studio um, today we are on part two of the everything is rosy medley we got a it's not a sweet it's a medley and it's really hard to get past that sweet medley versus thing okay part two everything is rosy medley journal and last week we had put our signature in and I had commented that you could possibly do a second signature, which I have done. And then I started adding some elements, which we are going to work on today. Now we're going to do the elements today, and then next week we're going to get the... Get into doing some of the fine-tuned embellishment things. Although there are some embellishments in the elements we are going to do today. So what we're going to work with today are punches. And you can use any punch in your stash. I have tailored tag that I chose for this one. Um, we're also going to be using the dies from the stamp set. And particularly the border die, this little bitty leaf die. And because my vagabond is all the way on the other side of the room, I've pre-cut what we're going to work with today and I'll also show you we'll be using some of these I think possibly if not this week the next and these and I'll show you what I did with those I took a class with uh, Kyle and Bruno, Bruno Bertucci last night in Australia and got a couple of neat things going and I'll have a project I'll be showing you on the blog here in a couple of days so for now, let's go ahead and get started on our embellishments. We're going to start with, let's go to the center. And for this one, I chose to take some of the punch outs from our kit. Move this one out of the way. And I've just put them in a tape box. And we are going to use the largest one here. Now, I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to sit here and fussy cut this for you but what I did was I cut a piece of keep uncorking my inks what I did was I cut a piece of navy blue cardstock that was just a hair narrower than my page so this one was two and an eighth and I came down about two and a half inches so two and an eighth by two and a half and then, I'm stuck. I just went ahead and glued it to where I was down here towards the bottom, glued it in place, and then I cut around the whole, uh, cut around from the bottom. I'm sorry, cut around from the bottom. I know I've got a pointer here somewhere. Just cut around from the bottom and left this top half attached, part top portion attached. God, you'd think I just got up. And then that was the only, then what I did was created a little bit of a fold where that stops. And then I have a flip up or I can use it as a tuck spot. See if I've got a smaller piece here in my stash. This will work. Or I can just tuck up underneath and it won't go anywhere. So we've got that one. This is our first one that we did. And I do want to use that one on, on the front journal. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just using our liquid all purpose glue. Scribble, scribble, scribble. And then mount that down. To the very edge of that. Then I'm going to create my crease. So I've got my fold and then we'll just go ahead and fussy cut around this just like that. Okay so that's one of them we're going that we've done for this one. The other one is I created what we call a belly band. And this belly band measures the full width of the paper, which is two and three quarter by three quarters. And I did it in Melon Mambo. And then I used the tailored tag 
and punched out from one of the pattern paper sheets from our scraps. Now you can use any type of shape punch you want or what we're going to do today for the front half is I've chosen to use one of the punch outs from the kit. So let's go back to this side and I'm going to hold this down a little bit with a clamp. Now this one I think I want to do a little bit different color. What did I do? I did the Melon Mambo on that one. Let's take and use part of our sheet here. Let's do that. So we need it two and three quarter inches. Two and three quarter inches. Let's go this way. Remember, this is one of the foil sheets, the rose gold foil sheets, that we ran through the embossing folder. And once it's embossed, it doesn't want to cut really well. Okay, two and three quarter, and we're going to do it three quarters of an inch. I'm going to go just a scooch over. And come back in with the scissors. And finish trimming that off. And then we're going to, that still came out awfully narrow. It is just over two and three quarter. Let's do let's go two and seven eighths I think. It's probably going to be closer. Oops, that's our scoring board. We want to cut here. Okay. And we did it by three quarters of an inch. Back through with our scissors and make sure that's trimmed off. Yes, I like that much better. And then we're going to use, glue would probably hold, but I'm really wanting to use the score tape. I know it's going to hold really well. It's not going to have any give at all. So I'm just going to put a little bit of score tape on either end or the tear and tape brand preferable Stampin' Up's is tear and tape okay and what I brought my there it is for my bone folder now because this is on the embossed paper we're really going to want them to burnish it really well to make sure it makes contact with all the divots in that embossing and then come back and pull that off. Like that. And then center it on our page just like that. Okay, now for this one, what I've chose to do is I'm going to raise, I'm going to we'll use these two together but it kind of blends into that background. So I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to dust it just a little bit. Ha 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 not with this. I'm going to dust it with the rose gold embossing and just give it a shake. You can hear the bead in there. And then I tap it down so anything in the lid, majority of it goes out. And then we're going to use our dauber and we're just going to dab into the lid just a little bit and you can scrape it off. And then we're just going to go across the edge like this. Just kind of, oops. Ugh. Got a little heavy handed on that one. And I'll put my lid back on my paint here really quick. And then I am going to go back and kind of smoosh that around a little bit and it'll give it kind of a shadowed effect. And then we're going to raise this up on the dimensionals so that not only does the color let it pop out from behind from off the background, but so does the dimensionals. And I've got the mini ones here. 
and so I'm not going to be I'll be pretty liberal with the amount of them that I use. Now we have the larger pokey tool from Stampin' Up, but I love this little small one. This one is being retired because we now have the big uh, the big tool here. I just like the littler point on this one. So if you want this one, go in and grab it before June 4th when the new catalog releases. And remember, anything that we have in the catalog that is not carrying over is only good while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone. So you're only going to grab those. Also, we're working with the um, Shimmer Mess paints. There is a bronze in our clearance rack that if you like working with these shimmer paints, you might want to go into the clearance rack and grab the bronze. We are keeping, I believe it's a champagne. The rose gold is not one of them in the catalog. The rose gold was only available with this Everything is Rosie Medley. So then I'm going to do the same thing here. And I notice that my points line up in about the center of that. So I'm going to stick my dimensionals. Just going to run a line of them across here. So because I want to make sure that I get a dimension off of there and that I get a good adhesion. In fact, here's a tip. Once you pop your dimensionals out, you've got this frame here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that frame piece out the length that I need it. Why waste anything, right? And I cut that just a hair long, so I'm going to snip that off. It can always go on the back of a flower. Stick it right back on the paper. And then this will go right in the center. And that'll give us one solid line of adhesion across that embossed mat. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to tuck this one here because that's where it's going to go. The other thing is, is I made this little book to go in the belly band so we have a writing space. Now this one measures, I'm going to say one and three quarter by five. And I think this one I'm going to do in Melon Mambo, I think. If I've got a piece of scrap here. Oh, let's, let's do this one. Actually, let's let this one pair. What did I do? I did that one and the leaf on the other one. Let's do this one. This one is six, so we need to cut this down to one and three quarter by five. And you can have it longer. I mean, this is six. You can have it whatever length you want, but I do want to only go the one and three quarter because... It has to fit behind that belly band. Okay. And then I'm going to take a piece of Whisper White. Let's see if I've got one cut. I do. Let's see, extra thick. I don't want that one. Let's go to this one here. Okay. So I did this one six by one and three quarters. So let's take this one down to six by one and three quarter. And then I am going to go ahead and fold them. Kind of give them a pre-fold first before I glue them together. That way when they've got the extra thickness, the double thickness of the two of them together, they will fold a lot easier. And then we'll just take our scribble glue, our multi-liquid, multi-purpose liquid glue here. Now remember, you don't have to go all the way to the edge because when you smoosh these together, there's that technical term, they will the glue will spread to the edge and then just line up your pieces just like that and then take your bone folder or the back of your scissors and mush them together just like that 
Now I'm going to let that dry before I fold it again because I don't want that glue to pop. But then it will fit right behind our belly band, just like that. Okay? So there's our second element. For our third element, we're going to do a, tor a corner tuck. And for our corner tuck, I used this one initially. Now this is a two and three quarter inch square, but I want to vary this up a little bit. I don't want to be using the same thing all the time. So let's try, let's see, what is it going against? It's going against that blue. Let's go ahead and use, and I've got my pile of scraps over here to the left. I really don't want to use that dot because it's very similar to the other one. Here's that one. Hmm. Well, let's see how this one measures out. It may be, it's too dark though. Well, let's see. Oh, it's two and three quarters. So that goes, that does that. That takes care of that. So we cut it two and three quarter and then line your points up with your cutting track. And remember to start, because those are points and you don't want to crunch into them, start your blade somewhere in the middle of your square and go back and forth. Okay, and while we're here, that one also had a tuck tag and it was two inches by three inches. Okay, so where's that? piece of cardstock that I had two inches by three inches. Okay. And what this does is it gives you plenty of places to go in and write within your book. Okay. So let's see here I've got this one and I did this because I wanted to run it this way. Okay. And again, I could use the glue, but I really like the way the tear and tape holds. Now, because I want to go clean to this edge, I'm going to go ahead and take off one side first. And then I can lay this one right over top of that get a really good adhesion in that corner and I'm going to go ahead and snip that one off burnish come back with my pick tool pull that paper out of the way I've got a little bit of sticky hanging over and I'll show you a trick with that if I have pages sticking together I'm going to butt that up right against the edge, just like that. And there's our tuck spot. Okay, next. This one, and I pre-cut this one because my thing is on the other side of the room. But I took a piece of the gold foil. Let's clip this one back down here out of the way. I took a strip of the foil, and even that leaves a pretty cool design. That would make an awesome belly band in a larger journal. Um, but then I cut this out and then used the liquid glue to just adhere it to the side of border of a page. And this is not glued down in the fine points. So I could tuck something under there if I wanted to, but this stuff is real this is a really delicate cutout, and I'd be afraid of breaking those points off. So I didn't, I chose not to do that. Where's our tuck? I lost our tuck. It should be here somewhere. Okay, there is our tuck. Where do we want to let this one pop off of? It does come off of that blue really well. 
but let's see there it kind of disappears if we lay it against that one it's going to disappear into that other gross gold background but we could put it along this side so let's just run let me get my binder clip here and hold that page out of my way run this just run a fine bead down the very edge and it's not a very wide this isn't a very wide piece, so you don't need a whole bunch. Do you need to come out of the bottle? But there we go. Just a fine line. And then what I did was I centered this as best I could so that I had the same portion of dye on either end. My sister will tell you that's the OCD in me. My husband would agree. Now, it does take a minute extra for that to dry along there, so I'm not going to trim that till it's had a chance to dry because I don't want it to shift on me. And then our final one today is this paper clip. Now, this paper clip is really super easy. There are two ways you can do this. First of all, I used one of our pieces from our... From our die cuts let's see if I can find one of them that I use this one and all you do there's my paper clips what I did first was I laid it down <clears throat> and I used just a couple of little glue dots to hold it in place on my cardstock um, while I fussy cut around it and I fussy cut around a piece of Melon Mambo. And then you take and insert the smallest, the shortest part of your paper clip to where it is on the back of your image that you want to show. Okay. And then you layer this with glue, glue your cardstock on top. I guess I used a different one. Oh, I got it going the other direction. That's why. There we go. There we go. Layer your cardstock on top and really press and glue it into place. You want to make sure you get quite a bit of glue in and around the paper clip. Now, if you have one and you want to use it, you can do this with a glue gun and you will get a, a much better adhesion and a quick dry. So this was one way that I used the element and then I put one of the mirrors in the center of the larger pink flower. But then this morning I was looking and I thought, you know what, I've got two of these and I don't have to fussy cut anything. So if fussy cutting is not your thing, this is a perfect alternative for you. These are the die cuts from out of the row. Everything is rosy medley. So what I'm going to do, let's start with this one. And see, they're a mirror image. So you can glue them back to back and have the same thing on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that, slide that in there. So my short one's on the inside, and then I'm really going to, now some people will put a little piece of double back tape on there when they put their paper clip in. I don't think it's necessary, but I do, if you'll see, I'm really coating that paper clip really good with that glue, because I don't want that paper clip pulling out anywhere when I go to pull it in and off of my page. So I'm really liberal with the glue on this one. And then just match up your design, match up your shape. And with this glue, you got a little bit of wiggle room. With a hot glue, you wouldn't have that wiggle room. That's another good reason to do this. And then just really press it good in, especially in there where the paper clip itself is at. And really give it a good adhesion. Now, if you can see on this white, as opposed to here, you don't see the outline of the paper clip really well, but on this white, you do easy fix you can still put that one's a little large let's see if we can find one of the smaller images to toss on here mm, same thing These. you can still put <coughs> excuse me you can still put a little bit of an image there give yourself a little bit of color <coughs> excuse me give yourself a little bit of color on that tag Let's go ahead and just pop these up really quick with some Stampin' Dimensionals. <coughs> Excuse me. I found a frog all of a sudden. 
pollen is really high around here, especially after all the rains and winds and everything we've had. And I've been out this morning and put clothes on the line. And so I'm sure I've sucked it up from somewhere. Okay, and then get our little... My fingers are starting to get sticky from using that liquid glue, so everything's going to stick to me now. I'll be walking around here with dots on the ends of my fingers like some kind of alien. And then we can just take and see it gives us a little bit of dimension, covers up that paper clip, and then I know I've got them here somewhere underneath this disaster of a pile of stuff. I thought I brought them back over here. I used them last night. I know they didn't just walk away. I had them this morning. I know I did. But I was going to say we could put one of the mirrored embellishments in the center of that. Aha, there they are. I knew they were here. Had such a good time online with Kylie and Bruno Bertucci last night. They came up with a couple of really creative ideas. One is a pizza box, which we sell the pizza box, and three by three note cards on the inside. Here we go, and there is our paper clip. And as you can see, it'll slide right over your page. Now the cool thing about these paper clips is because they're flat, number one, they're not gonna stick up above your, plan above your planner or above your journal, but you can also run them from the side and they become an interior element on your page from the side as well. And so that's what I'm going to put it, I think. I think I want it to put it on this one. Okay, before I forget, I do want to go ahead and do our uh, binding that I forgot to do last week and we are using the Knight of Navy ribbon with the rose gold trim and it's going to fit right along here and cover our stitching now, it won't cover it completely because of the width and I'm going to move these elements out of the way here clip these off now that things have dried And if you go from the back side, when you go to trim anything off, you can get a better handle on where things meet up with the edge of the page. Going this way is not as easy. Let's go. I hope you all have plans for Memorial Day weekend. Okay, we've got those two elements. Now this is dry now. And I can go ahead and crease it right on that crease. Because of that crease, it made it easier to fold it over. Oops, I got my book upside down here. And it will tuck. As soon as I find my belly band, it'll tuck right into that belly band. Oh, I know what I did. I did that one here. Let's tuck that one there. And this one went into this belly band. And then this one will go back over here with this belly band as well. And my paper clip. And I'm going to leave my paper clips out for a moment. Okay, we'll lay those elements aside. And you'll see we've got room there that we can stick the edge of this ribbon in. To just in the inside just enough that when if we fold it over it'll stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape on there and it's not going to take much but I'm going to cut it long enough to come across so when I fold this over the edge of the and I'm going to go ahead and put this one in place I'll bet you're wondering why I'm not putting this the whole length of the ribbon. And 
the reason I'm not is because it's going to fight with me all the way. If I do that, it's going to start sticking where I don't want it to stick until I'm ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this piece in place first. I'm going to get this piece, see it's already sticking to me, I'm going to get this piece in place first down inside and if you separate that you've got a little bit of more work room and I'm going to stick it right in that center and I know my fingers are in the way but trust me it's there and then I can use my pick tool to press that down into that underneath those books now I couldn't do this before I sewed my signatures in because I want to cover that signature line and then we can come back. I'm going to lay this open flat. And the other thing is this tear and tape. Now if you've got a little bit wider, I think you can use like a half inch in here. And I've got a piece of tear and tape there. I don't want to lose track of. And then this, this will help also secure your stitching when you do this. this off, pull this over your stitching, over your seam, make sure you're getting it straight, and then I know that I've got just a little bit of room there, a little bit more than I need, so now I can come back and trim this off just a little bit, I need to use my ribbon scissors here, trim this off just a little bit, because I've only got so much room down in there. and then use my pick tool to guide that in down inside my spine. Pick tool is a wonderful thing. Also, if you don't have that one, go ahead and get this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got a lock on it. So pull your cap off, unlock it, and then you've got a paddle that you can really get in there and press that in place with. And this is our pick tool. Okay. Now next week we are going to do the, the embellishments. We're going to be working with the paints and the inks. And I'm going to show you one. Now I guess I'm not going to show you that this week because I don't have the embossing folder. Um, you're going to want to have your embossing folder handy of your choice and your inks and make sure you have a dauber or a makeup sponge that you can use and I will try to have my big shot over here handy where I can do that on hand with you. And there is our journal for this week. Now next week when we're doing the embellishment stuff we're also going to be layering up the co cover. One thing I suggest regarding the cover, if this is going to be something you're going to want to tuck into your purse, you're not going to want to do a lot of embellishment on the outside. But we have these that you could do and do a flat, ele flat element. But again, anything that may catch corners going in and out of your purse is going to be a problem but if you're going to do this project for like nursing home and they're just going to lay it on their nightstand then make it pretty on the outside all you want we've got several of those kinds of labels we've got this bigger one we've got this one we can come in and layer with the rose gold So those are some options for this. Now mine is probably going to go in my purse, so I'm not going to do the cover, but we'll see. Next week I could change my mind. In the meantime, fussy cut 
or decide the best way to do your flip, top tuck, do your belly band and your notebook, and your paper clip. And next week is part three and we'll be adding all the other embellishments. I hope you have a safe weekend. Remember to click like. I'm already planning my June project and I decided we are not going to use Come Sail Away for our June project. I have another project in mind for Come Sail Away that will not be a long extensive project. We'll be able to put it together in one video. And so we are going to use Good Morning Magnolia for our June project. So you're going to want to come back for that one. Click the like button. Please leave any comments down below if you have any questions that I can answer regarding what we've done. Remember, a thousand subscriptions and I can start doing these live so we can play together. And click the little bell and you'll get the notifications for when all my new videos go up. Thanks for joining me today. Have a safe holiday weekend and creative blessings.